Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. And I've got a fantastic guest for you today. She's an expert at digital marketing, uh, Tokara Charisma. And she's actually out of the uh, um, the Aloha state. So, um, and I really love her ex- experience and expertise for the audience out there that is interested in social media marketing, content marketing. Uh, she's the one to ask. So, um, uh, welcome. Uh, Tokara to the show. Welcome, Tokara. Thank you for having me. And I I found out a little tidbit on you that you used to live in Hawaii for a little bit. So we have that connection. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a great uh, three years, and and uh, yeah, I just sunk. I love the uh, the um, the Hawaiian Islands and the people. So, um, but uh, talk about your your journey, and because I know you're originally from LA, marketer, and then now you're living life in uh, Hawaii, and how you what the work that you do. Yeah, yeah. So born and raised in LA, and I've been in Hawaii for 18 years now because of my children who are born and raised here. And I am the daughter of two hardworking entrepreneurial doctors, which we were talking about earlier, who have since retired and are now farmers and uh, grow grapes and make wine in Paso Robles. (laughs) in California. So if you're ever there, check out Four Sisters Ranch. I'm one of the four sisters. But um, that really showed me a, a strong work ethic when I was younger. And I always was told that I could do anything that I wanted. And so I had this strong entrepreneurial spirit. I uh, graduated business economics from UCSB. And I found that I really wanted to thrive in the air of my own business. I didn't thrive under fluorescent lights in an office working for someone else. So I did start an e-commerce business many years ago, 2007, as a solution to a problem where I couldn't find clothing for my baby. That was when I was pregnant with my firstborn. And so that turned into an international business. It was quite successful and e-commerce wasn't even a thing yet. any so it was this whole new concept. So I learned so much by building that business and also learned that I really preferred the service side of marketing, that I really loved grassroots growing businesses. And I was good at that. I wasn't so in love with product management, inventory, coming up with new styles and ideas, but I got such a thrill ride off of just growing a business going to sleep at night and waking up to money in my inbox with orders. That was such a cool concept. It was so new back then. So fast forward, and now I own a digital marketing agency, Charisma Marketing, and we provide full service digital marketing for our clients. And we're really data and analytically based because we believe in the data guiding our decisions. And that helps us solve very complex marketing and growth problems that our clients are facing. And we kind of pull together a full service omni-channel plan for them and then execute it and help them kind of get to that next level of growth. Yeah, really fascinating. And I um we're gonna talk about AI and um data analytics. And um so one thing is uh, you know, as a marketer, um like marketing, you have to be very quick on your feet and there's so many trends, it's almost like fashion. Um, how do you you've successfully managed to keep ahead of these trends and um uh how do you do it and what emerging trends do you see dominating here and um throughout and how to stay competitive in as a business? Yeah, I would love to take credit for that, that I'm (laughs) on the cusp, but I would say 90% of that was luck in my life (laughs) about I just got into certain industries right before they really hit hard. So I'm blessed in that way. And what I see now as we're doing this interview and it's, you know, mid 2024, you know, AI is a huge thing. As we all know, it's everyone's talking about it. It's been around for years and years and years, but chat GPT just really put it on the map. And that is guiding so much of the marketing these days. And it has its drawbacks and its benefits. Everyone knows this. We've we've heard arguments on both sides, but it definitely is helping businesses streamline a lot of the tasks in their marketing that they otherwise had to hire an employee for, or they couldn't do very well. And we're using it at a very advanced level. We will use it, for example, to write code in Excel sheets that are so long that they crash the document. The document literally crashes to create custom filters for websites that cannot come out of the box, right? On the website, there's no app for it. There's no plugin. So now we're writing script and code, which is there's truly doing that. (laughs) But 
these are the things that we're, we're doing with AI and how powerful it is. And the, of course, the trend has been for many years, social media and the onset of TikTok and videos and reels. And so for a lot of businesses, especially service-based businesses, where the owner is the face of the company and generational, it, there's a difference, right? They're an older generation. They're not as comfortable perhaps with this new concept of video marketing where you pull out your phone, right? And you just put it on yourself. And so that is what what a lot of service-based businesses are using to get ahead because they're creating entertaining or educational or relatable content and putting it out there so that they can have authority in the space. And that's a lot of what's happening. And when people are scared of it, naturally, no problem with that, it can hold them back because the train's moving forward and it's like, you got to hop on the train or it's going to pass you. And so that's something that your competitors could very well be doing and you're not. Yeah. You know, I love, uh, cause you're on the cut cutting edge and, um, we could talk about kind of the traditional marketing questions, but what I really like kind of talking to marketers these days, there's kind of this dichotomy because, um, one is you've got, um, AI and, uh, you can scale it both in quantity and then also, but then with gen AI, you can also scale it with quality. So talk about, you know, like uh, for a lot of businesses, when should you uh, just basically just execute and scale, like put out posts um, versus like really hone down, take your time, create something really of value it may take you longer. You produce less, but it's more impactful. Yeah. And I mean, it's a great question because I imagine a lot of people listening today are perfectionists, <laughs> like guilty as charged, right? So we take too much time doubting ourselves. And really, I'm just speaking from my own experience, but <laughs> we we don't go forward because it's not good enough or perfect enough. Or, it, But the thing is, is someone's going to see it on social media and forget it the next day. So it's a lot of times we're standing in our own way when it comes to that. However, quality versus quantity, there is a big difference when it comes to the technical things, right? So when it comes to SEO, especially let's say local SEO for a local plastic surgeon, right? That is going to be very important that it's implemented with high quality from an expert versus let's say a social media post that's going to come and go in just a day and be gone where we don't have to overthink those things. So it's a matter of weighing the ultimate benefits of the project at hand. If it's something where quality is going to drive your business far, like having a quality agency versus someone who's inexperienced, well, then we want to take time with that, right? And be very matter of fact about it and execute it properly. But then there's other things where it just get it out, push it out. You just have to, otherwise you're just getting in your own way. So there's ways to do this and there's ways to create quality content from these AI tools if you prompt them the right way. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, I'm assuming the strategies it is, um, is what your media agency, um, focuses on and specializes in. And, um, it's kind of like, it reminds me of, uh, like kind of like, a or like in investing, you have a portfolio, right? You got the kind of the boring stuff, but then you kind of got like kind of the, you know, medium and then you got kind of like to have the hot stuff and similar to a marketing strategy you have to have like just some of it's just gotta like push it out push it out and then others like sometimes you have like uh ads or uh, reels or you know or, or podcast things kind of just kind of spice things up which brings me to my next question is with these social media algorithms i was talking to this uh one um he was the founder of um the uh patreon jack uh jack conch or and he was saying like uh this there's this dichotomy between incentives for creators and the uh platforms because platforms they want to get like views engagement ads they want to incite you whereas creators they want to build that following and a lot of really successful creators they don't have million people followings they have like a couple thousand but that's enough to for them to build that audience so how do you reconcile this dichotomy between the algorithms and, and uh, creators. Yeah, it's definitely the yin and the yang, right, of everything. And it's really interesting because 
a lot of what I do, obviously what we do is digital marketing. So we're in every digital marketing space and we're hearing all this feedback. My algorithm is showing me a lot of content around digital marketing and influencers and creators because that's what I do day in and day out. And I've actually never had a beef, let's say, with Instagram's <laughs> algorithm for not putting my content out because here's the reality. This will happen with every social media platform. Every social media platform will incentivize influencers and users to get on their platform so they can grow their ad base, right? Their advertisers. And eventually, as these social media platforms get bigger and bigger, let's not forget that Facebook has like 3 billion users, right? That's like half the world. The, the real estate to show everyone's feeds is smaller and smaller. This is just supply and demand. So let's not forget, this is a free app. This is a free app that many people have grown their entire careers off of. It has never been easier to grow a business and get your message out there. So for me, it's almost like I have a little bit of a pause when I hear someone get frustrated with an application that's completely free, that gives them all the tools they need to grow their business, that needs to run ads in order to, to run this very expensive technology, and you don't have to pay anything, but because you're following more people over the years and more people are getting on that platform, it's it's impossible. And with a cost of platform for your posts to reach the same amount of people as they used to. And this will happen with every single social media platform, which is why it's important for people to get on these newer platforms and get in before the huge rush, because that's a way to build your audience before that real estate is taken up. So it's something to consider. Uh -huh. Yeah, I love that. And I really love this um, idea of um, finding the undiscovered real estate for attention and, you know, kind of, um, you know, went from like Facebook, then it went to Instagram um, and then uh, kind of TikTok. And then you, in between, you had like Twitter, LinkedIn. So um, if, you know, if there's um, entrepreneurs in the audience listening and they're like, yeah, um, Instagram is uh, matured. Uh, we don't TikTok is kind of um in in uh, flux right now. Where should I be paying attention? Like what platforms? Like in um in terms of like uh, videos, uh, is LinkedIn or YouTube? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I I really love this question. It actually get it quite a lot, and I and I also love sales psychology. I love human psychology, and sales truly is all about psychology. That's all it is. And so when we take our business, we'll talk about a local service-based business, okay? And you're locally limited. When you think about the way people find you, that is the first place you need to be. So if I am a, uh, I don't know, a spa and, in a city, and I'm thinking, how is someone who actually is ready to pay for my services going to find me? The first thing I'm thinking of is Google. Huh. Someone is going to Google, right? or Groupon or whatever those, those kinds of different platforms are. So these are the places that I want to optimize first and that are going to get me the furthest. So that means local Google ads, which are very affordable. You do not need to spend a lot if you are a local business. People really don't drive more than about five, 10 miles to get somewhere, right? There's only so many people you can reach. And SEO and optimizing your Google business profile, right? If you are a restaurant, one of the biggest places you can advertise on like, like is, is open table, right? Like huh. if you're listed on open table, by the way, I, I know restauranteurs who don't like open table because you have the, their payment process, which is you pay for a reservation, even if someone cancels, but you don't realize that open table, their reach is massive. Like that is exactly where someone is going to book a table and book a restaurant. So I would be on that platform. And the same is true for everything else. Real self, if I was a doctor, I would definitely be advertising on real self. I'd be getting reviews on real self. So these are the ways that I think and process these things. And even in my own industry, the other thing I think about is referral partners, which mm -hmm. is huge, huge. So if let's say I don't do website development, we do, but let's say we don't do website development. Well, there are website developers who are getting clients who only specialize in website development, if that client is spending money on website development, then likely they have a budget and are interested in marketing and pushing their 
their base or their their message out further. So that would be a perfect referral partner for me. And if I didn't do website development, they would be a perfect referral partner. I'd be a perfect re referral partner for them. So you really have to think outside the box and be creative. I'm like, I'm a huge fan of direct marketing and postcards for local locally based businesses. I mean, yeah. it's incredible. So there's so many ways it's just in your mind, think about, you know, how do you get to know, like, and trust clients for certain things? How are people finding you? How can you build out referral partners? So some of this is scrappy marketing, a lot of it's human psychology. And a lot of it is just thinking about using your time and your money wisely and not not wasting your time on platforms that aren't going to push the needle for you. Yeah. I love how you described um, a lot of these platforms, which are really not um, like in the main uh, well known per se, and um, but they actually function very well if you know based on what category you are, and it goes to show that you know like marketers, you you have to think psychology um, strategically and how to position yourself uh, to put yourself in front of the client to get your best foot forward. Um, uh, really interesting. Uh, how can people? find you and um, reach out to you, check out your business, see if they want to work with you and uh, so on and so forth. Aw, thank you for asking me. So outside of my parents being doctors, they were hippies. So I have a, a very interesting name, Takara Charisma, and I dare you to spell that correctly on the first try. <laughs> but luckily, because of that, no one has ever taken my name on any platform. So you can search Takara Charisma on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and Facebook, whatever platform you prefer. Yeah. I have tons of free resources on there as well as my website, which is my name. <laughs> and then of course, if you are interested in agency services and you have an elite established business, we might be able to be a good fit. And we offer free discovery calls and audits and that's charismamarketing.com. Yeah. And for all the audience, let's thank Dakar for coming on and uh, really insightful, lively conversation. And um, be sure to like, uh, like and follow her socials and check out her uh, company and business. And thanks so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me.